Good evening and welcome to our season 10 awards night. Now that we officially have two awards, we get to call it awards night, right? Uh, I like it. It makes us seem fancy. So fancy. I mean, I put on makeup for this, but we are still at home. So there's that. In all seriousness, we're very proud, honored, and excited to host these conversations. We established our Achievement in Television Excellence Award in 2014 and have since given it to actors, directors, writers, and producers from Henry Winkler to James L. Brooks, Felicia Rashad to Marcy Carsey. Don't forget Norman Lear. I would never. He's incomparable and perhaps one of the kindest and most prolific humans I've ever met. This award is our version of a Lifetime Achievement Award. It seeks to recognize individuals whose careers reflect the very best of television through work that is thought-provoking, genuine, expansive, and always entertaining. This year's honoree is Michael J. Fox, who has been impacting TV for decades, from Family Ties to Spin City, Rescue Me to The Good Wife. No matter the size of the role, his impact is undeniable and has earned him icon status. Now, normally we'd be hosting our awardee in Austin with Franklin's Barbecue, beverages of choice, and a lot of hugging. We'd be on a stage giving this intro and handing over a physical award, followed by an intimate peer level conversation. Sadly, for so many reasons, most of that can't happen. The award is on its way, along with an Austin care package with all the future promises to host Michael anytime in Austin, but the intimate peer conversation, that is still happening. In fact, in a beautiful convergence of ATX TV past and future, Michael chose to have this conversation with Dennis Leary. Dennis has not only been to the festival a few times, he allowed us to host a Rescue Me reunion a few years ago, the same show Michael won an Emmy for. So we feel very honored to have them both be a part of our season 10 celebration with this TV-centric conversation. It means so very much to us to have them both here and to get to listen in on a conversation of two friends who have impacted TV in so many ways. So with that, we're going to invite them out and let them get to it. Please welcome Dennis Leary and season 10 ATX TV <laughs> Festival Achievement and Television Excellence Awardee, Michael J. Fox. Hey. Hello. Hi, guys. Thank you so much What's for up? being here. It means so much to us. We're going to let you guys take the barbecue, you right? Franklin's Barbecue on the yep. way. That's good. That sounds good. <laughs> I've had that. It's really good. I've hey, been, um, I want to start off by saying um, that amongst the records that are held in the history of television and festivals, because I, I do love this festival, I think the Rescue Me uh, reunion that was at the ATX Festival a few years back, uh, I may have personally set the record for cursing during a Q&A <laughs> with the audience, but I, I'm sure as a cast and with Peter Tolan, my co-creator, we, we broke many cursing records. So, uh, and, and we may be cursing on this. It may happen. It may happen. Let's just start off, motherfucker. Okay, that's number one. Um, this is weird, man, because you're, you're the first friend of all of like the people like, you know, in our age group and that we all hang out together. And to, you're the first one I know that's getting a lifetime fucking achievement award. You remember when we were in Boston and we were at the, at the, at the, 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 the benefit that you came to in Boston for, for cancer research. Uh, uh, and, and the mayor came and made you, uh, he said, Dennis, Dennis Leary, Dennis Leary Day. Yeah. And he came up to me after you said, do you ever get a day, a day for you, a day, Michael, was five and I said, I had a week. <laughs> it's true michael j fox had a week i got a fucking day but you know that's it is, it is it's just worse he's bottom but you know it's it's like uh it's a weird thing i don't know how, how do you feel about somebody saying like we're going to give you a lifetime achievement award now i have uh such a funny take on what a life is that 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 i am um, first of all it's, it's silly I mean, I don't deserve any award. I just show up and do what I do. And, you know, it's like fun. It's like playing house for a living. It's like just pretending like when you're a kid and you're running the Mission Impossible theme through your, through your brain while you're running through the parking lot and dodging behind parked cars and going to the, the Woolworths. Um, so, like, I mean, we're just crazy people. And, and so to get a lifetime achievement award for that seems funny. But, but in terms of the time, it's been a long time. It's been, I've lived a lot of lives. And, and, um, uh, my life changed remarkably in one way, and, and then changed in other ways. And, and um, so I, 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 I consider a lifetime's achievement award. Right. But you know, but the, I mean, it, it's to me, it's weird because like when they asked me to do it, I thought that, I thought it was like 
just to fill the audience and Mike and I have done a couple of these, but we've done them like they're like, uh, you know, um, to uh, at the Tribeca Film Festival, we did one, but that was just about like um, about your books and about, you know, our uh, both of our careers, I guess, mostly you though, right? But it wasn't like a lifetime achievement. So I'm looking at this thing and I went like, fuck dude, lifetime achievement, like how fucking old are we? Because I don't think that we're old and your recent book is titled, you know, No Time Like the Future and Optimist, you know, considers mortality, you know, but it's the book, which by the way, I'm just gonna say this, this is the only plug that I'll do. You can do your own plug. <laughs> Uh, and I know I'm biased because Mike's a friend of mine, but I'm just telling you, if you've read his other books, if you haven't, it doesn't matter. His other books were great and they were terrific and they, they were funny and they were bestsellers. But this book in particular, I said this to you personally, is not only funny, but it's also unbelievably beautifully written about mortality and about the idea of considering your life, what you've done and you know what you're thinking about for the future. But you come out of that book definitely I did anyways, feeling like, oh my God, fuck, man. Like, you know, I got so much I want to do. Yeah. So that's what I reflected on in this. I was like, shit, they're giving a lifetime achievement award to a guy who just wrote a book that's <laughs> about like, yeah, the, the, the future. I can't wait to see what happens, you know? Okay. Um, but it's also like, uh, I, I thought of it this week too, because we had this thing coming up. Do you want to tell people who didn't see it on your Instagram, that great fucking Charles Grodin story, because Charles Grodin, a fucking hilarious actor, a great actor, died this week. And you posted an Instagram story. Would you want to tell that story? Yeah, hey, Charles Grodin did, did, was on the Michael, Michael J. Fox show. It was a short-lived show, but, but he, he did our, uh, we turned it to be the last, last episode that aired, um, where he played my father, and he had a heart problem. And, and so at a certain point, we had a scene where we I was imploring him to take better care of himself and and he's arguing back and forth. And we were going back and forth. It's a bit of an emotional scene. And we did, we did another time, and we did another time. After the third take, I said, I think we got it. And, and Charles said, what do you think we should do one without the Parkinson's? <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. It's kind of genius. It's oh, man. Movie. Just, you know, that, but that, like, I guess. Feeds I, in. One of those. Do you think we should do one without the Parkinson's? <laughs> um, that made me realize too when I saw that Instagram in regards to doing this like I'm like fuck you know what you, you forget and maybe the audience does as well like because of all the things that you've done I forget I was I was basically just out of college when you became a giant fucking television star mm -hmm. you know I was like 21 22 years old you were already like you became a huge fucking TV star on Family Ties, and within a couple of years, you were a giant movie star. And yet, I still remained shorter than four, five foot five. I, mean, I never, I never became giant in any other sense. And, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, but I mean, it's been a long career. And and, and, and they didn't want to see me again. Like Judith Wiener, the casting director, said, "See him again." It's really good. I think you missed it. They said, "I'm a grown man. I know what I'm, I know what I'm doing." And they kept it. It was all good. And and um and so she, she she keeps looking and can't find anybody, and it gets to be a month later, and I'm eating plain wrap macaroni and, and and wet cardboard. I mean I'm like down at nothing, and and uh, just hanging on to wait to hear about this thing that I heard that maybe Judith Weiner was putting on a fight for me, and maybe uh, and a million chance from hell that, that that I may get back in again. And if I got back in again, I, I kill I kill. So Judith finally got me back in again. And I got back in and I went, so I guarantee he was very cordial, but he's a bull, he wasn't a bullying big man, but he was really cool with me. And, and then we did it, and I, for some reason I did it in a totally different way. I did it. I didn't make this kid smart and as much as just happy that he was so smart. And then just happy that he was him. And um and um and they loved it. And so then what happened after that was so I got the job and I had to go to the network and Brandon Tori got paid. And I he did, he did said it was lousy. And Gary now is my champion. Gary is not my Judith Wiener. And, and Gary's saying, he's great. You know, he wrote him three jokes, he gives me five laughs. And and um and so Brandon said, Yeah, but I can't see his face on a lunchbox. <laughs> famous, the famous Brandon Tartikoff quote. Yeah, I was like, you know, MTV cops. I can't see his face on a lunchbox. Yeah. So so um so eventually in time after 
family uh, after Back to the Future came out and, and Teen Wolf was out and all this stuff. Um, I, I had a lunchbox made from my kitchen. <laughs> And, and I said, you kind of, this is for you to put your crow in. Lots of love. <laughs> it was good. Daddy kept it on his desk. That's fucking awesome. And he, he, so, so, so lifetime, yeah, it's been a lifetime. It's been a long time. It, well, it's also, <clears throat> it's interesting that you're telling that story because it's like, uh, it's the, you know, we, in a way, have Matthew Broderick to thank you for your television career. And then shortly, into the television career, we have uh, Eric Stoltz to thank for um, getting fired from uh, Back to the Future because that's how you got that job. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just people, people leaving. I just I shovel like at the end of the parade. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big horse. <laughs> uh, okay, we, we got to fire that guy. So uh, let's try. Let, let's give that fox kid a chance. Yeah, it's strange. I mean, Matthew is great. It's a genius. And Phil's Eric, they're both amazing actors. And Matthew didn't, I mean, Matthew just purely didn't want the job. Yeah. Um, so, but, but, um, and he got plenty of good jobs after that. No, he did. And by the way, and so did, and Stoltz, so did Stoltz. It's just so funny because I know you and you've written about this. And, and some people have probably heard you talk about it about being the underdog and people completely underestimating you. Which is, you know, I know personally is a is a thing that that you have a bunch of funny stories about, including that one. But they've underestimated. First of all, then you become this like the reason you get the family ties to job is because your fucking comic timing is so innate, right? Not the fact you're a good actor, but you also have the comedy timing, right? Which can't be taught. Uh, it's also probably what uh, what. Uh, you know, is one of the ingredients for Back to the Future, right? Is your timing and your interaction with, with everybody, in particular with the doc. But, and then you become a gigantic star in both realms, television and film. But they underestimated you in both because I, I look at your career and I go, I mean, some of this I witnessed personally because you were on Rescue Me. And you were playing a character that, that I was part of writing who was fucked up. And it was a we wrote it as that show was dramatic arc and a, a comedic arc built into it. You know, it's going to be funny, but it's a really, really messed up guy with a, with some serious uh, dramatic scenes. Um, I remember saying, I remember saying I can name Jake just for a second. He was he was a misanthropic, uh, sex addicted, drug addicted, pill popping, smack short snorting, just maniac, drunk mess, and he was and he was paralyzed and and. And I said to you, what made you fucking think of me? What, 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 this is proof from Mike. <laughs> uh, none of those things. And, 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 I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and, I, and I can't stop moving. And you got me paralyzed. I, I, I physically can't stop moving. But, but in our mind, it was like, first of all. <laughs> great. Yeah. No, well, first of all, uh, you know, again, we, uh, we in considering you, we were like, okay, this guy, this is a great character. I know Mike will love to I, the idea of playing the guy, but also, He'll, I know in his heart, he'll love the challenge of having to be still because he's a guy in a fucking wheelchair. I mean, there's a scene, with, most of which was improvised, improvised because we came up with the ideas. You crawling across the floor, fucking, you know, uh, uh, cursing and screaming and, and, you know, trying to grab me. So, but anyway, my point being, it's like, uh, to me, and you won an Emmy for that performance, but I was watching that performance happen from the first day. I knew you could do it, obviously, but uh, the first day that we shot that, uh, you came in and you had a big fucking heavy dramatic speech. It just worked out that that one of the dr dramatic, strong fucking drama scenes was the th first thing you were shooting. And I was in the scene with you. Uh, and we, did, we were doing your uh, first big speech. You're drunk and we were sitting in a bar. And, uh, and not only did you nail it, but you actually... You kind of you scared me in two fronts. You scared me as a as, as the character because you were so unpredictable in the scene, what what you were doing. But as an actor, I was like, "Fuck, Mike is going to steal all these fucking episodes from me." <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Plus, there was a couple guys on the crew who were like, "When you were done with your first take," and then Peter was Tolan was directing, was resetting the cameras. There was a couple of crew guys who were like, "Holy shit!" But um. But that also, the reason I bring it up is because Casualties of War, which is 
that's another thing. When I, that's an amazing performance in that movie. It's a Vietnam movie. If you haven't seen it, you should. But uh, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Like it's Mike and Sean Penn. And that, uh, again, is not the, the kind of role people think of with, with you, but it's the kind of, it's the way in on The Good Wife, the same thing. It's very unpredictable uh, work that, you know, is just um, for where you came from. Again, people underestimating you. It's just, you know, in the history of television, uh, that that character on Rescue Me, and plus the work on the good one, it's just crazy, you know? Well, it's so fun. It was so fun to have the second uh, uh, career. I mean, I did, I worked up until, um, I, did, I did all of the films, and then, and then I was in, I was in, I, I think these events, I looked at these events. I, I, get, I get married, uh, my, my dad died, my son was born, uh, um, I got, uh, Diagnosed with uh, Parkinson's, uh, I, I reacted to it by drinking a lot. A couple of years later, I quit drinking, and I've been sober since uh, '92. And um, and uh, and my life changed. All those things changed my life. And and so uh, when when I was in New Zealand in 1995, um, doing doing uh, the Frighteners, and I just said, "Why am I here? Why am I? Why am I on the side of the world when I get two babies?" At, Two babies and a son, an older son at home, and, and Tracy's at home in, in New York. And I'm right here. So I, I came back to New York and in Spin City. I yep. got four years and, and, um, and left me the cable hands of Char Charlie Sheen, and he did a great job of it. And I kept getting paid, and it was good. And, and, um, and, uh, and, and then I, I, I decided to go and set the foundation and, and stop working. So I considered myself retired. And then, uh, I, I did a, uh, I did a, um, uh, from Bill uh, uh, was producing uh, uh, Sound on My Head, um, uh, the, the hospital show. Scrubs. Scrubs. And then he, um, and he, uh, he asked me to come to do a show. So I thought, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I'm not doing anything. And so I went in and did it and I loved it. And I, I, I got, I'm using a whole different part of my because my I don't have the same tools. I don't have the same thing. I got movement and facial control. I don't have complete and, and it's kind of passive stone face. I get sometimes my voice gets monotone sometimes. I thought, how am I going to work all this stuff in? And then and then this character was was um was was uh, uh, manic depressive and and um and and and, 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 and obsessive compulsive. And I thought, I mean, not to equate the two things, but. But there, there are similar mannerisms or similar manifestations of, of, of the disorder. And so I said, well, I'll just, I'll just co-op that and use Parkinson's to, to, to help me play that. And then, and then um, a similar thing happened with, with your show. It was like that all that infirmity, that this damage that this guy had done to himself, uh, I, I, I was able to, to just let this manifest that damage. And, and, and also the other cool thing I loved about, about your show is was that personally, it, he really helped me with something. Um, I, I, I was trying to think through why I made the choices I made to be positive and to, and to, and to, and to just embrace this shit and just say it is what it is and see what's around the edges to, to, to mine and exploit and take, take advantage of. And, and that's the way I've always been. Um, and, and I realized that the, 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 the Dwight, uh, was it Dwight? Dwight. The, 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 the character uh, uh, on your show had, uh, who was a, was a Extreme athlete was a base jumper and a yeah and a surfer and 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 he um and he uh was injured in an accident. His brother was killed in an accident. They come from a hockey game and they get hit by a truck, a drunk driver in a truck. And he was so pissed off that with that life, that that's how he had fucked up. That's what damaged him. A drunk in a pickup truck after a hockey game killed his brother. And and I mean that will make you angry. And 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 in the same way, you're you're a young guy. You're on top of the world. You got everything. You, your wife, you had a young son, and and, and you're diagnosed with it with a pre progressive brain disease. Like you get pissed off about that, um, but but you make a choice, and 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 Dwight made one choice and it was the wrong choice, and 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 I made the right choice, and that really helped me a lot. That show to, to think of that to put those two things side by side to have to have you create the the devil for the other side of my shoulder, you know, the shoulder. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, but. At the same time, you know, it's also, it's also, I guess, the Lifetime Achievement Award. It's also because 
you, that show existed for me, Rescue Me, because, uh, you know, first of all, I had done a show called uh, The Job with Peter Tolan uh, for ABC, which only lasted two seasons. But Peter and I, you know, fell in love with each other in terms of work. And then my cousin got killed. My cousin was a firefighter. And you know the story. My cousin was a firefighter up in Worcester, Mass, in my hometown. And uh, he got killed in a, in a big fire. And that, uh, you know, uh, that's why I started my foundation. But that event, you know, sort of obviously changed my life uh, in, in many circumstances. And then 9-11 happened. Um, and, you know, most of the guys I knew in New on the New York Fire Department survived, but a couple of guys died. Anyways, um, that show came out of the pain I had about my, it was a place for me to put the pain from my cousin's thing. Anyways, what I'm saying is as we were older, we were both older and found a way, I don't think you can do it when you're younger to take, you know, your work improves because you have more life experience and things to, uh, all those feelings to express. One of those feelings is anger, right? Um, but quitting drinking definitely helps <laughs> because at least that's, if you've taken that out of the equation, your head is, on, is clear enough to deal with real feelings as opposed to, so it's just interesting to me that um, the work that, you know, for you, from all your work is great, but the work that you've done, you know, and I don't even know if it's the second half of your career, because I consider the next part, like you said, the no time like the future. So whatever point we're at now, let's say this is the middle part, that middle part, that work was really fucking interesting, you know, um, not just Dwight, but, um, you, you know, you, I forgot about Scrubs, beginning with Scrubs the stuff that you did in The Good Wife, it's kind of remarkable, actually. Um, I feel now, you know, the way probably you feel about that. I, I like, I, I love playing, I always love playing fucked up characters, but I love television because you get to play the character and if, if it works, you get to do it repeatedly. So you can go back to the guy and do multiple episodes. You know what I mean? I had said too that in, in your in your you, you, this applies to you obviously hugely uh, is the quality of the writing in television now is just silly. I mean it's just crazy. Yes, the, the best writers are writing for television, comedy and and, and drama and, yeah. and a documentary framing points of view and yeah, it's, it's amazing the work that's going on in television and and um and 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 uh, that's been a real change because television was a poor stepchild to to, to film right and and so so like on. Uh, scrubbed and on your show and on Boston Legal and on um, uh, The Good Wife. Um, that writing was insane. David Kelly on, 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 on Yeah, Legal. yeah. Um, uh, he, he just, it's just amazing. And, and so I picked out in it and, 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 and um, on The Good Wife, just incredible. I mean, he hit the stuff and, and, he, and like, cause I wanted to, I wanted to underplay. I wanted to, like my whole idea with behind this guy was a real simple concept. I just thought, uh, and this was on your show too. That 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 people see a wheelchair, or see see someone with a disability in, on television, on film, and the music gets soft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hazy, and, and they're valiantly struggling with some mundane task to try to conquer this thing, and like me trying to put a ball on a tee in a golf course, and and then they finally do it, and then the music rises to crescendo, and handicapped people can be assholes too. <laughs> and, 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 and manipulative fucks and and and, 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 and so it was on the play one. Uh, and, and, and I just thought like, this guy, this guy, this guy's reaction to what he to his lot uh, uh, was was that he said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna manipulate juries with it. He's a lawyer. I'm gonna manipulate juries with it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work for drug companies and 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 and, and make big fees. And 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 people think it was hyper uh, counterintuitive." That, that that I would be that I would be uh, uh, defending these big drug companies because but but it's well, you see my my symptoms will go away when I take these pills. The pills are very good and and um, it's just so evil. It's, it's so funny. And Juliana is amazing. Yeah, you, you, just, uh, you, you look her in the eye and, and she and you better show up. You look in her eye and you say, "I, I got to be here for this." Yeah. Well, that's. <clears throat> I, I think it's uh well it's, it's not a fucking headline anymore i mean for some people it still is because they're hanging on to, like but with their fingertips on the edge of a ledge like oh my god you know television can't take over film and it's like it, it's in a completely wrong approach mm -hmm. to the issue right 
is the pandemic seems to make people panic even more about television versus film. It's not a, it's not a contest. It's just like, like you said, the, I, I hate to make it this simple. I feel like it was when televisions, when flat screens came out in the rectangular, rectangular form and everybody basically had a movie screen now hanging on their living room wall, you know, the quality had already been going up, but then it was kind of like, all right, the game's not over, but it, you cannot look at television anymore. It's, it's actually, I feel it's the reverse. Like television and film are the same thing now. And if people are gonna watch a film, they may watch it in a movie theater. I, I, you know, that's the primary place to see certain films, right? But eventually they're gonna watch it, you know, for the first time or again in their living room. That's not what the argument's about. The argument's about television's quality has so fucking surpassed most uh, of the films that come out in the course of the year. I mean, every week there's a new fucking amazing television series on, on television. And like you said, it's the writers and amazing performances, you know? You should go back to the, the, the geographic situation and watching home as opposed to movies. I noticed a thing, I don't know what this means, but I noticed it, that, that we used to have- uh, Who's that? That's my neighbor breaking in. Uh, <laughs> we used to have a, uh, I live in New York, it's, it's, it's the, the, um, but, but we used to have our TVs in boxes on the floor. Yeah. That's why I see you like this. Yeah. You know, I see you like this. Yeah. Like in the movies. Yeah, you're right. And so we had that worshipful, we're, we're open, we're, our hearts are open, we're, we're open, to, we're looking up. Yeah. And, and, and it's, 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 it's really, you never seen anybody's big screen TV down at the, at the level of the table. It's always mounted up. Yeah, and it's, I think it's, <clears throat> and so it is like a film experience, and, and, it is, and it is like, like I, I, I recall you. My, 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 my picture is, I don't, I don't feel I'm missing a lot. What I'm missing is the communion. Yes, right, right, and that's actually, uh, you know, for uh, for uh, being in a the theater with a big uh, action movie, or especially a comedy, you know, that's that's still going to be true, but. It, the whole argument about like television versus forget about it, man. They're all the same thing now. It's just like you watch The Crown, where um, you know. Listen, uh, you know, I'm, you know me. I'm the least likely guy to be interested in watching anything about the fucking royal family of England, and a, you know, a fucking and it's a period piece basically. And you know what? The I'm not. Is there a hockey game on? Because if there's not, I'll watch an old hockey game. But I got sucked into it because of the acting and the writing and the. And you know now I can't wait for the next season. That's the, the nature of television is just sort of taking it over. You know, it's like that work we're talking about. You know, listen, I don't know where, where I remember the, the big signpost for me in terms of like what used to be called cable was when Tolan did uh, Larry Sanders with uh, Gary Shandling. That's that one. That was when I went, holy fuck, this is this is a change in the game. And then when Gandolfini did Tony Soprano, that's when I was like. Okay, what the fuck? I already was falling in love with television, you know, the idea of doing it, but as an actor and as a writer, then I was like, fuck this, this is really interesting work, right? Um, and now like every idea I have, I, you, you think of an idea and you're like, it could be a television show, a series, or it could be a film. Let's make it a fucking TV series. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, to me, like, if I wanna play the guy, I like, I'm like, fuck. I, it'd be so much fun to play the guy and or if I'm involved in the writing to create these people and watch them travel through time for like four or five years, you know? And if someone who makes television, you know, you, you know, you're watching when you're watching it, you know, you know what's happening six feet to the left of the actor, his grip, stand in an inky. And um, um, so, you know, you know what's happening and you know why they're doing things the way they're doing them. And both uh, aesthetic, uh, picture in, 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 in the words and the action and the acting and and you know when they're vamping it's like uh, they take a thing that should be a movie and they make it a series yeah <laughs> and, 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 and you, see, you see like a, there's a whole long conversation about boats or something and it's like, like this is just this is just shuffling your feet yeah. like, to, the show, if it, to catch up with the plot and, and but but even that stuff is interesting like some of the european stuff I, I said, it's not the same way where um uh, russia occupied Fin uh, Finland, no, Norway. Um, I, it was called Collateral. I think no, Collateral was an English one that I watched, but about uh, um, Russians in, in in London. 
But but I mean, just these strange television shows. I mean, I, I, I watch six hours of it, and and it's just because I love to see, uh, I love to see with the European movies and uh, television shows how they their take on American stuff, and and they try to, and I shouldn't say they try because they they accomplish something. They, it's really watchable, but it's uh it's 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 just a bizarre look at the way like we have our cop shows on our, 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 our TV. Yeah, well, it's also. The, the range now is so uh, astonishing, like, you know, um, you know, for me anyways, I mean, as a creator, you just, it, that, you know, it's, it's weird because it, you don't want to criticize it, but it's kind of, uh, John Landgraf, who's the head of FX, used to say this seven years ago, like, you know, um, there's too many television shows being made, but now that's when they were making, he felt like, oh my God, there's being, there's 50 new shows a year. Well, now I don't even, let's, let's we can make the number up because it actually will sound real. 600 new shows next year. There's so many shows. I feel intimidated by it sometimes at night with Anne, my wife, right? Because we're like 45 minutes of just going through all the choices, being, yeah. you know, right before you fucking find, uh so oh, no. that, that menu screen on on many times yeah and it's like kind of like they kind of landed by default on a logo or something right and then there's that other thing of like you talk to a friend and you're like oh you know he's like i you know i'm i'm in fucking canada shooting a tv series and you're like what tv series and he names it and you're like oh fuck i never heard of it you know but you know it's it, that, there, there's that but the other the the good part about that is that there's so much great work being done that you know, you you stumble upon stuff half the time. You just go like, I can't, I can't. Did you watch um, the Queen's Gambit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Richard you know, shows coming back to FX that that, that that I loved, and I don't know if you watch it, but it's totally your thing. Uh, it's called uh, uh, Mister in Between. Oh no, 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 no. I, yeah, yeah. I just saw an ad last night that it's coming back. Yeah, no, it's, that that it's, guy it's, is just it's, that. It's, that was one of those series when when I first heard about it, I was like, what? Like, why didn't I fucking think of that as a series? And then I saw the trailer and I was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. You know? And what the fuck is this show? Well, I just was watching a game. I was watching the Bruins game last night and they ran a commercial during it. The Bruins won the uh, series against the Capitals last night. Let's just throw that in. Um, but they ran a, a trailer, like a brief one, like a 10 second trailer. And I was like, oh fuck, that's right. That thing's coming back. That's a great show. That's cool. But I, uh, you know, again, another example, like, I, you know, a guy you know, we'd never heard of in America. Um, great point of view. I, I, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm writing something now that, um, that uh, you know, nobody really knows about that I'm really excited about that I hope gets, gets picked up and goes to series. But, you know, I'm, it's such a fucking pleasure to write and there's a part in it that I could play. To write stuff and, you, you know, as you're writing it, you're going like, fuck, the literally these people i can play this guy for five years and these people these other actors i can't wait to i would love to see who these people are for i mean that's the thing you know you love about doing a series a guest thing is one thing because you're just popping in and doing your thing and coming out but when you're together it's the other part of it is the family aspect of it like when you're on a great movie and you're there for three months or four months or five months it sucks when it's over because you, you like you've loved working with those people if it was a good experience but in television, you get to hang out with them for, you know, and rescue me. We did it for seven years, you know? I was texting with, uh, with Justine, just Justine Bateman, just before I yeah. went down with you. I mean, it's great. It's great. These, these, these relationships uh, are so deep because, especially like on, on Family Ties, we went through some, we were just like kids and we went through this thing. And, went, and, 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 and Justine, just so you know, is a really interesting, really freaking smart person and, and, and really uh, um, would be very great at this festival because she's so insightful and so uh and so uh doesn't give a shit what, what anyone thinks and then and, and she's brilliant and uh, but but I, I i would hate to not have that relationship um and um uh, uh there's a guy sandy chapman who played this this speech writer on um on uh uh spin city and and he um he was close by and he, he would come over and i sit on a bench in the park across the street central park and we just sit in the bench and have coffee like once a week you know, like two old guys, and and um, it's just it's great. We uh, that's a big pigeon, that's a big fat pigeon there. And I almost shot her. The dogs gonna chase that pigeon. And it's, it's just like crazy. We're all men together. It's well, it's uh, it's a weird thing, man. Like the power. 
of at, at the power between you know because that's the other thing now is that it's not just about how big television is and, and that and the experience of watching new things but because of the availability and streaming everything you know family time every episode of family ties spin city whatever the hell it is you did people are watching it right now as we're talking they're watching multiple episodes people are binge watching in time you know how many times do you hear people say you know uh I just been binge watch Family Ties again. I just binge watch, you know, I, I got Rescue Me like, you know, at least once a week, quite quite a few times more often than that. Like, you know, we just watch it again. I'm like, fuck me, these people go back and you can watch any of that. I watch all the all in the families, you know? Yeah. So the power of it is that now the work just is there. It literally is there forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, it yeah it's yeah. crazy. And And I'm sure this happens to you too, right? Like, um we do this thing uh every year uh for my firefighters foundation at the fdny training academy and uh a fundraiser but you know in advance of that i you know i go there uh to set things up and have meetings and whatever and you know that's where brand new firefighters you know young people 20 21 year olds 25 year olds they're being they're going through physical training and testing to see if they can become firefighters and so sometimes you're walking through the halls to go to a meeting and there's like, there's 200 of them, you know? They might be coming through for the, going to get lunch or just coming back from some part of the, and you know, I'll be walking through the hallway and I hear people or they say it right to me, but I hear them say, Tommy Gavin, Tom, hey, Tommy, hey, Tommy Gavin. Oh my God, Tommy Gavin works here? Like they're, they, don't, <laughs> they don't see me as who I am. They see me as the guy from the show, right? Because that's the power of television. So it's like the same thing for you. It's like people literally, like going back to what we were talking about earlier, you know, they've been seeing you as a character on television since 19 fucking 81 or something. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's not just some people's whole lives. It's other generations of people. Yeah, this is the thing about, about Back to the Future is it in, in, in Family Ties too, to an extent. I mean, uh, Someone else say about family ties and say, but but back to the future, uh, that's it's a cross generational thing. So, oh god, it just it just, it just like if you if you some of my like 11 year olds in 2021 dig that movie, I know. 85, and then you know, some 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 happened there. Some, oh, and, fuck yeah, and and, it, and it's like and, and it's a little crazy. I, I um, I, I just started doing uh, uh, before the thing struck with this virus. I, I I I never for years would do those shows, those um, fan shows, the, the, the conventions. And I just, then I just one day I just said, I'm not doing anything. Why don't I go and just sign some autographs and, and then say hello to people? And I realized that I did a round table at the end of the day, and and um and I said, and someone asked me about the experience, and I said, I never wanted to do these shows, and 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 and, uh, and then. And I realized when I was here that I'm not doing it so you remember me. I'm doing it so I remember you. Right. They all know that you're responsible for everything I have in my life, and everything everything is good for me career wise. You get you bestowed upon me, and by taking your kids to to, to see it, and they take their kids to see it down the line. I mean that's happened. Uh, uh, it's 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 amazing, and and um and, and the same way with television. Like uh, I wrote in the book about 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 a, a period of time when I was kind of had. Spinal surgery, my um, uh, tumor removed my spine. I, I, Parkinson's, and I had uh, and I broke my arm. Uh, oh yeah, and, and, and it was, was kind of getting out of this funk. Where I, 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 I said, if if it's, if it's about making lemons out of lemonade, I'm not a fucking lemonade business. I don't, I don't, I, don't, I can't put a shiny fix on this anymore. And I was miserable, and I watched, started watching TV. And what I watched was what I came addicted to was westerns on something called the Icon and Heroes and Icons channel. Yep. In, in, in a channel called Buzzer, which was old game shows. I mean, when I say old game shows, I mean to tell the truth and, and uh, what's my line and, and like black and white, Kerwood Derby and, and just I mean, old shit, really strange stuff. Uh, uh, Steve Allen, um, is it bigger than a bread box? Oh um, man. And, 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 and I, I got, hold on, I treat you when I change the channel, like I was watching porn. I, I like, I like, I get a good one when I see watching match game. <laughs> or, or Tattletail's worse. Or right. Stuff on twenty five thousand dollar pyramid. Like having done it. Um, uh, so it was a strange thing, and then I balanced it with with the heroes and icons, which was uh, 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 
Newman is as as a in in one of Dead or Alive and uh, and and um, Maverick and and um, stage uh, stagecoach and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Paladin, my favorite. Oh yeah. What was that? And then what's that garbage? And and racist, awful, misogynistic, terrible stuff. It was just as entertainment. I remember with with one of Dead or Alive with uh, with with. Uh, 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 Steve, Steve McQueen. Um, my mom was pregnant with me and was in labor, and she wouldn't leave the house until it was over. She was watching, she was, so I was wondering what episode it was because I've seen them all now like, from my, my binging. And she didn't remember what episode it was. I said, Wait, was it was one the elephant? Was it, <laughs> you know, but 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 then it's what the same with actors. I stand all these people are dead. Yeah, the thing you've watched, you're like, well, that guy's clearly dead. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 19, 57, so he's done for a while now. And then and, and I sort of, you know, everybody was dead. And I realized, well, I'm on TV. I'm part of this thing. I'm, I'm like on this endless rerun thing. And, and one day I'm going to be dead. And, and someone's going to be watching the show. He was a funny guy, the little guy that's dead. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen at some point. Um, you just want to make it so that the, when you're around, your kids get at least 20 cents. Uh, yeah. right, every single time it's it's also it, it part i guess part of it like getting a lifetime achievement award is <clears throat> you look i actually wrote stuff down on my phone and i was like you know what am i fucking writing shit down for because in the end right um if you're getting a lifetime achievement award like they mentioned norman lear or like i mentioned um carol o'connor carol o'connor was a fucking amazing actor who did some fucking great film work and some you know, uh, uh, amazing stage work. And, you know, he had a series uh, or two after All in the Family, but that series is still such a landmark piece of work. If you go back and watch his performance and that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, he, he influenced Alice Keaton a lot. You know? And that show that everybody did, he was, uh, he was in an like war, his friend, him who was a war veteran who, who uh, was gay, it turned out. And, and then they started talking about the war and, and uh, he, he gives this whole long speech about about Vietnam and then you know, I don't think about the goddamn war no more. And he said, God damn, and, and they and they they dulled it out, but but it was just a, it was just me. It's just like this change from this guy to 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 he was he kind of got like even a kid uh, I was in the acting, but but like I I would kind of watch well, really good whatever he just did that that's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that that woke me up. They got that made me snap my head. You know. I just uh, I, and I've always been moved by acting like that and um, and 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 you try to you try it's weird because an act, as as an actor you try to do that quality work but you don't want to do that work you don't want to do that again you want to do something that's as, as inspired as that and, and the only way you do that is to not try is to just feel it and yeah then, yeah yeah well and I feel like too I, I don't know as a story. As a guy who can write and act, I just feel like, again, the, the Lifetime Achievement Award is a great thing, but I just feel like, I felt the same way when I read your book too, like, and we would, we've been talking about this, you and I, about like finding new stories to tell. You know, as a writer, I just feel like, and an actor too, I feel like I've got, you know, I can't, I, I wake up thinking about what's the next thing, right? Not just like, what's the next job when somebody calls me to be, you know, a guest star or to be in a movie or whatever. But you know, I'm also waking up every day, going like, ah, "Fuck, what's what's the next thing?" Like, I, I'm excited by it. The world just did a major shift. So, so the rocks are loose and the critters are crawling out from under, and it, and the water is full of stuff. Yeah. It's like this, this is a time right now where a lot of stuff is going on. Yeah, I knew when I was writing my book, uh, most of it I wrote during during the quarantine, during the pandemic, and and I was working with Nell Fortenberry, you know. Yeah. And she's my 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 producing partner. But when I write, I, I we found this thing with each other that, that she can understand what I'm saying and, and get it down. And I can't type. So so we would do this whole thing with, with uh, Facebook, Facebook, fa uh, FaceTime, where uh, uh, I would have my notes and I'd be in TV on the screen. And I I woke up Tuesday and I went to the store to get down and, and, and I'll, I'll say the next book. I have all the stuff in my head, the words. and um. And she, she wrote it down, and, and you get to the thing where we're like, this is, this is the, 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 except for my wife and my kids who are also quarantined in the house, uh, this is the most 
dynamic relationship I had. And, and, um, and it would get to be, I'd go outside uh, and, 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 and get a glass of water. I'd come back with two. And I said, oh shit, you're not here. <laughs> well, that's so fucking funny, man. And, 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 wow. And it, was, it was an amazing experience, but what, 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 what I'm getting at is I, 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 I convulsed all this stuff about myself in my life. At a time when the world was, was under tremendous pressure and people were dying. And it was, just, it was an awful, you know, I was going so introverted. But then, then uh, uh, um, and it was, it was a time of dichotomies anyway, because, because uh, I'm with my family and we get puzzles out and Tracy making amazing meals. And we're, we're sitting around the table, we're talking about social justice and, and frontline workers. And, and I'm hearing my kids say things I didn't know. I, didn't know that. I knew they were smarter than me. I didn't know that, but they were not smarter than me. And um, um, see the, the college education college scholarships came, came to it, well spent and and um and it was an amazing time and and, and then yet you know the people in the hallways seeing loved ones for the last time through windows yeah well and 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 it was really a lot to deal with so when I finished the book I I had to write a uh, uh, an epilogue where I dealt with that and um and I just uh. I just, it all came, it all come back to this thing that, that, like every experience, good, bad, is, is an experience. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so, but we live in interesting times. And so we, we have an opportunity to, 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 to get hold of them. And I, I thought when, when my book what was funny, it came out, it was, it, it was about, it was about quarantine. It was about isolation. It was about me taking my stuff and, and going in with it and, and, and picking and choosing what windows I looked at out of the real world until I found the big window, which was gratitude. And 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 it was the only way to book about about gratitude, about being happy for whatever you have, and um, and so it, it's 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 cool. It's cool being out here. It, uh, listen, man, it's like you know, I'm glad they're giving you a fucking lifetime achievement award, uh, and you know, I'm and I'm proud of you, and I hope you're proud. But like I I, I look at it, I'm like it, it makes me smile because I know that. That you're gonna, you have all this other shit you're gonna do, and I know all these other stories you have to tell. Uh, we've been talking, you and I have been personally talking about like developing uh, some new ideas for television series, not for us to star, for us to write. Um, so it's it's great, it's fantastic, and it it's, it's such, you've had such a long lifetime in uh, in front of the cameras and telling stories, but I know there's so much more shit left. It's like I, I know the two of us like. We're just sort of like uh, you know, the Bruins are. What's the Bruins' next series going to be? Because we want the Bruins to win the cup. And at the same time, like, what's the next story? What's the next job we're going to do? You know, um, it's usually they give people lifetime achievement awards, and it's just like because they're going off into the sunset. It's like we're not fucking going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I, I know when you're done with this fucking thing with me, you've got like six other fucking things you're going to do today. Yeah, I tell you, so I guilty confession about lifetime achievement awards. When when I'm watching an award show and they're about to give the lifetime achievement award. I tend to slip out because I don't. I don't want to see uh, Raymond Massey sit wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. I don't want. I don't. Want, I don't want. <laughs> right. I, I love these people. I, I love to get the award, but I just, I don't want to be there when they when they when they go. <laughs> right. Oh Jesus! Get him off the stage. Somebody go get him. <laughs> Donald Trump was off. <laughs> Here we are. Oh my God! Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, fuck. <laughs> well, I think that's a great way to end. <laughs> Thank you, let's have a even more. <laughs> Oh my God. Ah. All right, folks. I'll see you in a couple of weeks and I guess I'll see the people at the festival whenever I get down. <laughs>